There's no fan in this. This one will kick the fans on and get quite loud. My Surface Pro 2017 just, just clocked in a 244. That's the same kind of score that I get on my MacBook Air. I've recently picked up a Surface Pro 2017. This is the M3 model and I've been testing it and I really like it. I, I have a Surface Pro 3. This is a Surface Pro 2017. And there's one unique thing about the Surface Pro 2017 is that the power limit throttling for Turbo Boost, Power Max, and the Short Power Max is unlocked on the Surface Pro 2017. This is a ultra low power M3 chip, but the interesting thing is that you can overpower it. So I've got this set on 15 watt turbo, 20 watt short turbo, and stock it's six watts and eight watts. And there's a little package thermal design power down here. It's idling at two and three watts. When I start a stress test like Cinebench, I'll do the GPU test because the GPU test does boost everything up a bit more. So I'm in my back room, the lighting's bad. The reason why I'm rushing this on my phone is because the Surface is currently doing firmware updates or trying to on the next restart. It's gonna do firmware updates, three of them. So I wanna show you what happens before those firmware updates happen. Okay, I'm gonna run the GPU test. And while that's running, watch the TDP number spike and it should hold it. It also does not thermal throttle or get hot in my testing that I've done. But it turbos up to 2.6 gigahertz and we're at a TDP of 12 and holding. That's, previously it used to be eight where it would max out. So like I said, the, uh, the thermal power is unlocked on the Surface Pro 2017. So if you can find the i5, the i5 allows you to run the chip at a full 35 watts all the time. Um, but highly recommended you add another case fan if you're going to do that, but that does boost the performance of it significantly. So we've probably got like 26. Oh, we got 34 GPU test. You got 34.68 in FPS. Awesome. Let's just run a CPU test right now. Before the firmware updates, we'll get a baseline reading of that. Also, I'll show you that the TDP spikes when running a CPU test as well. It's a very efficient chip. The, the chip that's in this is very similar to the MacBook Air that I tested. Uh, but this one is passively cooled. It's a Core M3 7Y30. It typically uses five watts. It'll use one to two watts at idle. It'll use five or six. It'll, it would spike up to eight watts by stock, but I've got it set to go up to 20 if it needs to. If we, hit, if we were hitting a thermal throttle, we would see dips here, but ever since I started the test, everything is spiked and stayed high. We're set to maximum performance and plugged in. Anyway, I just want to show you that we've been holding a package TDP of 9 watts for the whole time. So that's a little bit of a way to overclock on a non-overclockable Surface Pro, is, it, is that you can jump up the power limits. As far as I know, the new Surface Pro 6, that does not work anymore. This is specific to the Surface Pro 2017 models only. So it's something in the motherboard where they forgot to lock that out. Or opened it up on purpose, who knows. Before we reboot and update the firmware, these are the settings that I'm currently at, where I've got Turbo Boost Power Max at 15, Turbo Boost Short Power at 20. Stock, it was six watts and eight watts. Now I'm going to install these updates and we'll see what happens. Okay, so far so good. So I've done the firmware updates, we've rebooted. It, it kept my settings of 15 watts and 20 watts for, for power limits. And I'm just preparing to run the GPU test again. Seems like the GPU in this little thing is pretty good for being a fanless design. Oh. CPU just hit 2.5. That's the highest I've ever seen it go. And the processor's at almost 900. Nice. This should be a good run. All right, yep. Best yet. Best yet. 35.33 frames a second. That means that this little thing will run older games no problems um, and have probably pretty stellar battery life too. Just running an on-battery Cinebench test on my Surface Pro 3 i3 4020Y versus the Surface Pro 2017 Core M3 7Y30. And this one is still where this one started way ahead of this one. And uh, I just want to get a sense. I've set them both to maximum performance mode on battery. I do keep getting different results every time. This time my Surface Pro 3 only got a 108, which, and you can see previously it's gotten a maximum of 145 as its score, 
but my Surface Pro 2017 just, just clocked in a 244. That's the same kind of score that I get on my MacBook Air. And those are my previous scores. 217 was previously my highest, so wow. That's a big jump. I didn't think it would be that significant of a performance where it's over twice as fast. So yeah, Surface Pro 2017 is no slouch. So yeah, note this difference where I've now moved the keyboard over to the Surface Pro 3. So this is still the Surface Pro 3, but I'm in uh, Intel Extreme Tuning Wizard, and you see how this stuff is all grayed out? Short power max, boost power, turbo power, it's all grayed out. They've locked down that chip. The surprising thing about the Surface Pro 2017 is all of that stuff was unlocked. So you can dial up your, your turbo power and it takes it and that's surprising and it doesn't get hot either when I ran the benchmark the back of this device which keep in mind this is a completely fanless design unit there's no fan in this this one will kick the fans on and get quite loud and get quite hot as well as it weighs it probably weighs twice as much uh, this Surface Pro 3 it is a significant heft difference so the, the 2017 is significantly thinner lighter, faster, and quieter. This thing is completely silent. It doesn't make any noise. It has no fan noise and it has no coil, coil whine either. So I'm, I'm very much a fan of this device. I, uh, I was wondering if it would be worth the upgrade price, but so far it definitely is. The other random cool thing is that the pen, the pen works on both at the same time. See how it's got the hovering cursor? Unlike an iPad where you have to pair it to each device specifically, on a Surface Pro, you could have a, one pen across multiple devices. It doesn't care. How super cool is that? I was shocked to see that. So, wow, um, that's impressive. So I've now got the Intel Extreme Tuning Wizard running on both, and I'm just going to start the Cinebench run again. So now they're both starting their CPU test. And I wanna see what happens here with the core frequencies and stuff. Sitting at 1.5, but this one's turboing up to 2.19. Well, that's the cache. Here's the core. This one's turboing up to 2.4 gigahertz. And this one is set at 1.5. It gets a lot hotter and it's slower. So yeah, there has been significant improvements going from the i3 fourth generation up to the M3 seventh generation. Surprising improvements. So I guess something I had never realized before is that this Core i3 4020Y has no turbo versus this one does. So it can go beyond its base clock of 1.6 gigahertz and it does that quite often where it's still, it's been turboing at 2.4 the whole time. And it's not hitting any thermal limits. It's not hitting any power limits. It's using 100% throttle, it's using 100% usage and it's pulling in just slightly above spec nine watts. This one doesn't tell me how many watts it's pulling. It's probably at 15, but it's older tech. But yeah, this is the Surface Pro 3, and look, it can't... Uh, the blue spike is CPU utilization, and it's cut off there because I can't make that screen any smaller, but it, it cannot hold 100% usage. Very interesting. I had no idea that my Surface Pro 3 was so weak. I mean, I figured, I knew it was the lowest end spec and it had ran fine. I mean, when you're using it day to day, it feels fairly snappy, but performance wise, this one kicks its butt. We got a 20.14 frames per second on the Surface Pro 3 and right at the very end, the fans did kick on. I Main difference being, look at how rock solid it is. CPU utilization is at 100% and does not drop during the whole test versus this one is a spiky mess. But yeah, Surface Pro 2017. Really awesome if you can find one on a deal because now there's the Surface Pro 6. I don't know why they didn't call this Surface Pro 5. It should It's what it should have been called, but they went with the year instead for this model generation. But the coolest thing about the 2017 is the secret that you can dial up your turbo wattages. So there are fixed clocks, but you can play around with the power. And once you do that, then you can get a lot more power out of these things than they're designed to handle without any ill effects. The battery is still good. The, I've just ran a bunch of benchmarks and a bunch of GPU tests and the back is ever so slightly warm to the touch. This thing is hot. Yeah. Okay. All right guys, if you enjoyed this or you learned something, hit that like button. If you're new around here, subscribe. If you want to talk to me, leave a comment down below. And as always, thanks for watching. 
The keyboards are really good too. This is the Surface Pro 4 keyboard, which they haven't changed since Surface Pro 4. So I bought this uh, to use with this device and I've, seen, I've liked the blue color, so I moved it over to this one. But this one did come with a new keyboard. So I have a black brand new keyboard for it. So I'll, uh, yeah, I might sell that off because I don't need two keyboards because I already have the old original Surface Pro 3 keyboard for this guy, which is worse in every way. If you're gonna buy a keyboard, get a, a generation four or newer.